Greetings, this is Silent James. Uh, wishing you all good health and safety. Uh, and thank you for spending part of your day with me. Checking out my video. Today is a special day. It's April 6th. And it's my friend Dan Valley's birthday. Dan uh, unfortunately passed away in 2009. Every year I try to draw some pictures of him and remember what a wonderful, wonderful, special, truly awesome person he was. I met him in FIT. We both lived in the dorms. And the reason I I had seen him walking around the school before and the reason I remembered him was because he wore a, a skit system patch and that is a Swedish punk band and I had never met anybody that knew who they were so I was like who who is this person um, the day the first day I met him he lent me uh, Swedish, a different uh, Swedish punk band called Discanto. He lent me the cassette tape. And then um, I think that day or that, yeah, that day he invited me to a show at ABC No Rio, which is, I don't know if it's still around anymore, but it was a hardcore punk club in the Lower East Side of Manhattan. And uh, we were going to see a band he really liked called Tragedy. I had never heard of them. Um, but he invited me, and I was like, sure, I mean, <laughs> sounds good to me. <laughs> like, you know. Um, and then from that show, uh, for, for the rest of my time at FIT, he was. He was like family to me. Uh, I don't want to say like a brother because I never had a brother and, uh, you know, I'm not too crazy on, on blood relationships, but, um, but yeah, he was, he was like family to me. We hung out every day. We would have breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day in the, um, in the cafeteria and he we would keep each other cracking up like there was there was just no end to it it was um that's what i remember most about him <coughs> was his laugh he had this laugh and i <coughs> pardon me i can attempt to um try to <laughs> replicate it but i, I it's gonna it's it was like <laughs> like but much more booming, like, <laughs> I could never do it because my voice is, is, um, I don't know, uh, my friend Esther described it as a radio broadcaster for a snail race, so <laughs> it's not, it's not the most booming loud voice, but yeah, his was booming and loud, um, yeah, what, uh, Let's see, yeah, so many fun times in the cafeteria. Um, I hated eating there, but w because he was there, it was, you know, he, he made everything bearable. Um, but yeah, I used to go over his dorm room all the time, and we'd listen to his records, and um, we'd go to shows and eat at disgusting vegetarian restaurants. He was a vegetarian. Um, lifelong activist, animal rights activist. We go to protests together. Um, but yeah, most of all, he's my friend. Um, I can come to him with any any problem. And there have been so many times since his death that I've run into issues. And you know how it is when you you know you go through your phone and like you, you know name after name, and you feel like there's nobody in there that you can really call or count on or anything like that. Um, he, he was, he's like always been a person that I just, I wish was still around because I, I know I could, I know I could come to him with anything and, and he'd be, you know, he'd be helpful. But yeah, what else? Uh, I can tell some funny Dan stories. Uh, one of my favorites, um, this one has a little bit of, 
uh, coarse language so if you're if you're like me in your baby ears you can cover your ears but I was at his uh, after we had um, moved out of the dorms I was at w one of his apartments in Bushwick and he it was really late at night and he wanted to rent a rehearsal space to record he was a drummer and um, he would get together with a few, a few musicians sometimes and, and, and make punk songs. But so he wanted to record at the space. So he calls this place up and this guy gets on the phone. I could hear through the phone. This guy sounds like, you know, he's on his way to his gig in Van Nuys or whatever, like total, like, like sounds like a, like a, a rat, like sleazeball. And so he's like, he's like, uh, Dan's like, oh yeah, I'd like to, you know, order a room for tonight, reserve a room for tonight to record. And the guy's like barks at him. He's like, well, what kind of room? We got lots of rooms here. You know, which kind? And Dan, <laughs> Dan gets real quiet and looks at me and he's like, just give me the shittiest room you got. <laughs> Um, we, uh, both of us are fans of, of Japanese hardcore, and, um, we especially would crack up at, at the band names, because Japanese hardcore bands have, like, really funny, they're all, the names are in English, and they're just uh, some of the most bizarre use of the English language I've ever heard. Um, and then one night I remember he had a list of like all the Japanese hardcore bands, like the funniest band names. And we were, we were literally up all night laughing at some of these names. Like, like it was so, so funny. And then since then I've, I, um, I was at my local record store, Thrill House Records. This was months ago, obviously before the pandemic. And I saw a band name that made it was, you know it made me laugh so hard when i saw it that like i never heard of the band i didn't know what it sounded like but so i put it back but then it, going through the store i just kept thinking about that band name and kept cracking up so i go back flip it over you know sure enough japanese hardcore band and um i went up to the register uh and i hand i hand the record to the guy um, so I'm gonna say the band name. Okay, again, this is coarse language, so cover your ears if if you are sensitive. Um, so the band was called Siberian Ass Torture. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so I see the I see the band and I'm cracking up. So I go up to the guy at the counter, I hand it to him, and I go, "You're killing me with these band names." And he looks at the bed and he, he looks, you know, he, he's like, uh, he, he's uh, never seen this thing before, even though it's in his store. And he's cracking up and he's, he's trying to be, you know, an adult, I guess. And he, he, he looks at me, you know, he rings it up. <laughs> he looks at me and then he goes, okay, well, enjoy your... And then he was like, <laughs> you could tell he was like struggling not to say the, um, the band name. Um, so he's like, enjoy your record. <laughs> like, oh my God. So anyway, yeah, that was something I wish Dan was here for. You know, he would have, he would have, uh, <laughs> he would have died laughing with me. Um, what else? Oh, uh, he... So, I don't know. I don't know if I should tell that story, but <laughs> some some stories maybe I should keep to myself. But um, what else? He would skateboard. He um, oh we I I posted a photo today on Instagram. I posted this photo a few times. It's one of my favorite photos of us. We dressed up for uh, Halloween as you know, the characters from Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. I dressed it up dressed up as Hunter S. Thompson, Raul Duke in the book, and he dressed it up as um my attorney. And that was a lot of fun. So we were going around the Halloween parade in New York. If if you're in New York I I highly recommend that. I mean, that was like one of the one of the my happiest events I've attended in New York. So um, highly recommend it. But yeah, so we were running around that, that park, uh, that parade, and, um, 
uh, where am I going with this thing? Anyway, no, he did a great job. And the two of us, you know, we, we were, uh, definitely in character running around and the great thing about that parade is you can literally go up to anybody straight up a con- strike up a conversation strike up a friendship um pull a prank on them you can literally like you know <laughs> do that kind of stuff but you're in the parade and you're in character and people just have to like accept <laughs> accept, <laughs> accept it but um but yeah that was that was a lot of fun um I'm trying to think what else what other dance stories there's so many he was very much loved by so many people um my friend Esther told me that he he is one of these people that literally like she had never heard a bad thing about them like ever like she'd never heard anything any bad stories about them or any any anything they ever you know he ever did wrong or anything like that like people just loved him um he was an artist and a fine artist and later in his life towards the end i think when he was graduating his paintings really to me were very interesting um they they were abstract but like i no offense to any fine artists out there but it was good abstract if that if that makes makes sense to anybody abstract art has never been my favorite thing but um but yeah they they were very interesting and he had this one that looked like a dog that um he had he had up at his art show uh my friend Wu was at and um we all went and it was like yellow and blue and it was one of my favorite uh probably my yeah my favorite piece of his and um, it was just a really beautiful painting, and it, it was just interesting to see him go in that direction because, it, like, it just came out of nowhere, and then he had he just had all these awesome paintings that just came out of him, like, like all at once. So that was really cool. Um, he lived all over the city. We were actually supposed to be dorm roommates my second year at FIT, which would have been amazing, but the man legally responsible for me refused to do his taxes so i wasn't eligible for any type of financial aid um so i got kicked out of that room before i even moved in kind of it robbed me of that time that i would have had with my friend really upsets me but it's over so um but yeah I, I would visit him in that dorm room too and he was just he was just a laugh right like so funny me um dory kate Jonan, greg um Wu, we all used to hang out and have a lot of fun um like running around and running around the dorms and stuff like that um but yeah going to abc no rio was was totally awesome with him um that was a great place i saw so many good bands there we saw dsb which is okay again for the censors defiance of shit bastards and that was probably the best punk show i've ever been to um, they're from Japan. They're an 80s hardcore band, um, totally 80s too. Like, and they had the biggest hair I've ever seen. I mean, I love. I'm, I feel like I'm a connoisseur of big hair, but like the, these hairdos were huge. Um, what should I? Yeah, I'll go with blue. I don't know what to what to color this, but whatever. Um, I didn't want to say anything while I was working on this, but I really liked the way this came out. <laughs> Even though he's making, like, sort of a frowny face. He was always making funny faces, so... And he never... He didn't really, like, to pose for the camera, you know? So, um... Yeah. Uh... He's a goofball. This looks weird, because this is continuing, but that is not... <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Okay, I'm out of time, but I love you, Dan. Happy birthday. Ta-ta.